Today we're going to take a look at um, waves, how waves work, the different kinds of waves, and um, just go over some of the um, basics. So the first thing to know is that waves transfer energy without actually transferring mass. So for example, we've talked a lot about um, transferring mass and energy. So if you kick a ball, for example, your foot's going to come into contact with the ball transferring energy from your foot to the ball directly. Um, the ball itself, for example, might fly through the air and knock over a cone. And it's, again, transferring its energy from the ball to the cone. But the mass itself is all moving through the air. And um, so you're transferring both energy and mass. A wave, on the other hand, can transfer energy, but no mass gets transferred. So if you take, for example, an earthquake, in the ocean. Uh, this starts the, the waves, this starts the, the energy transfer, and it's going to transfer all the way, maybe a hundred miles or more, until it hits the shoreline. Here's you over here, you're just hanging out, and the water's going to hit you, knocks you over, and um, you have indirectly been affected from the earthquake, but the energy transfers through the ocean to you. So the two types of waves uh, I want you to know, the first one is called a transverse wave. And kind of the characteristics of this is each segment moves perpendicular to the motion of the wave. So the wave's going to move this way. So imagine you going, uh, moving the string up and down. You're going to be moving it vertically, but the wave itself is going to be moving horizontally. An example of this would be a light wave. And I'm going to show you a better visual here coming up. The second type of wave is called a longitudinal wave. And this one, the motion is going to be parallel to the um, kind of the displacement of the, the particles. So if you imagine a slinky, if you're pushing it back and forth, there's going to be a transfer of energy this way. But the motion is going to be horizontal as well as the vibration. So an example of this would be uh, a sound wave, and that's really what we're going to focus on in this unit. So let's just uh, take a look. Um, it's a good visual of this. So in a transverse wave, um, we're going to start the vibration going up and down. And I want you just to watch these red particles. So notice that they're moving vertically up and down, right? And then the motion of the wave, the energy of the wave is moving horizontal. So they are perpendicular to each other. One's going up and down, and this is moving this way. And again, going back to even the concept of the wave, here's the vibration over here. So this is the beginning energy. And then if you're over here, let's say it's the water wave, this energy is going to hit you over here. But the mass, this is not transferred any mass from one end to the other but the energy definitely does. Um, here's a longitudinal wave down here. So in this one, um, again, watch this red particle. It's just going back and forth horizontally. And if you were to watch any of these particles, even though it looks like they're all moving this way, okay, they're really just moving back and forth, vibrating back and forth. The energy, however, is moving all the way down. And you can see it down here. You can see the energy of the wave is heading all the way down. So they're both horizontal or they're both parallel to each other. All right, some of the features of the wave you should know, and you should definitely sketch out this picture. So um, the crest would be the peaks of the wave. The troughs would be down here, be the valleys of the wave. Um, the amplitude refers to basically the displacement from equilibrium. So if we're going, uh, if it's vibrating up and down, if this is our middle point, imagine a string that is no vibration, right? It would just be lay horizontal. And then once you start those vibrations, that would be the distance from the middle to the peak or the middle to the trough. So the wavelength, and this is almost obvious, but this would be the distance between crest to crest. Okay, or trough to trough. 
basically it's a distance when you start seeing this repetition here. So um, you can see this labeled in the diagram, that would be the wavelength, the distance, literal distance from peak to peak. Uh, the period is the time for one wave to pass by. So imagine, imagine this is me and I have a stopwatch and I'm going to go ahead and time how long it takes the waves to pass by me. So if I start my stopwatch right now, one, two, three, four, five, it takes five seconds for that wave to pass by me, we'd call that the period. The frequency, on the other hand, is how many waves pass by per second. So in this one, it's hard to do with this because it's moving so slow, but uh, imagine this was just a snapshot of, say, uh, one second. And you see one, two, three, four waves. Well, that frequency would be four waves in a second. And so it's just telling you how many waves uh, are going to be passing by you per second. The velocity of the wave, um, this would be, you know, the literal speed of the wave, how fast it's moving. So, um, you know, how, how many meters per second it's going to traverse. Um, it, this notice this is dependent just on uh, the the medium that it's traveling through. So, for example, um, if you have a tighter rope or a tighter slinky, uh, it's going to move much faster. Um, it's independent of the wavelength, and we're going to focus a lot on this uh, a little bit later. So, I'm going to do a couple simulations with you right now. Okay, here's a nice simulation. It's going to um, help help us visualize this a little bit better. So um, here's my wave. It's a transverse wave here. And again, the frequency would be essentially how many waves are going to pass by per second. So think of um, frequency as how frequent you see the waves. Now notice if I increase the frequency, what happens? So if I'm standing here watching these waves, more of these waves are going to pass by me in a second. So here's kind of a lower frequency, right? Not too many waves pass by per second. And then if I go up here, much, many, many more waves. One thing to notice, though, is that the, the speed of these waves is the same. So by increasing the frequency, what am I changing? Well, notice that the wavelength here, the wavelength is much longer. So they're farther apart. The waves are farther apart when you're at a lower frequency. And when you're at a higher frequency, the waves are uh, closer together. So they have a smaller wavelength. This is a nice inverse relationship here. Um, let's see, what else? The amplitude. So the amplitude is the height of the wave. Right, so this is going to be a real short amplitude. So from the middle here to the top, that would be our amplitude. And um, notice what else doesn't change: the frequency doesn't change, um, the wavelength doesn't change, and the velocity doesn't change. Just simply the height of the wave. In terms of sound, the the amplitude would be the the loudness of the wave, and then the frequency and wavelength. This would tell us kind of the pitch, so whether it's a low pitch or a high pitch. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. If we look at this in terms of sound, sound is a longitudinal type wave. So this is what the, um, the picture would be here. Again, the wavelength would be if you see kind of these, these regions where all the atoms are compressed together, it's pauses. So from here to here, this would be our wavelength. And again, notice the red particles are just going to go back and forth, whereas the energy of the wave is going to move all the way along horizontally. Let's get it going again. Okay, so you can see the energy moving this way. Um, notice if I lower the frequency, okay, the wavelength is going to increase. Um, the amplitude doesn't, we'll talk more about the amplitude. It's kind of hard to see on the simulation, but. We'll do that in a future lesson. All right, so let's look at the uh, equations that we're going to use. Um, 
we'll start off with an equation from basically like day one of this class. So here's our velocity, and remember velocity is going to be our displacement over time, or distance over time here. Well, if we're talking about waves, the distance is going to be a wavelength. So we could write our velocity equation as the wavelength divided by the time for that wave, which is called the period, so wavelength over period. We'll recall the relationship between period and frequency. Remember the period is how many seconds per cycle. Frequency is the number of cycles per second. So that's going to be a nice inverse relationship here. So t is 1 over f. And then if we just combine this second equation with the third equation, we're going to get our velocity is equal to our frequency times our wavelength. And this really is the key equation of this unit. So let's try an example problem. Let's say we have a wave on a string, certain frequency, certain amplitude, and a certain velocity. We want to calculate the period, wavelength, and velocity of the part a single particle. So for a period, let's just recall. Where am I? There I am. All right. So for a period, remember period is simply uh, one over frequency. Okay, well, our frequency was given as 4 hertz. So remember, it's just saying in one second, there's going to be 4 cycles. So how many cycles or how many waves, or how long, what's the time going to be for one of them? Well, you can see it's clearly going to be a quarter of a second or 0.25 seconds. So if you see 4 of them in one second, then... Um, the time for each would just be a quarter of that second. Okay, so I'll write that as A. Okay, letter B, we want to find the wavelength. So um, again, the key equation for this unit is going to be V equals F times lambda. And lambda is the symbol we use for wavelength. So our frequency here was um, one quarter. Our velocity will, is given as eight, so we'll say eight equals, actually our frequency is not one quarter, our frequency is four. And we'll multiply that times our wavelength. Okay, and so you can see our wavelength is going to be two meters long. All right, velocity of a particle on a string. So this is what this problem means, and you could kind of, kind of go back to that visual that, I, the, that I've been showing you. So remember, if we're just looking at a single particle here, single particle. This particle is going down and back up. So even though the wave motion is this way, horizontal, the motion on that particle is going down and up. So the amplitude here is given as uh, 20. Okay, so again that's from the, the middle to the top. So if we just kind of follow this, we're going to go down, I'll do it over here, we're going to go down 20 down 20, we're going to go down another 20, that's 40, back up another 20, that's 60, and back up another 20, that's 80. So in that process of one cycle, a single particle is going to go down 20, 40, 60, 80 centimeters. So we use kind of our normal velocity as distance over time. And in this case, instead of talking about kind of the horizontal motion of the waves energy, we're talking about a single particle. So this would be 80 centimeters. And again, we just found that time was a quarter of a second. So one fourth or 0.25. And that's going to give us 320 centimeters per second. Or if we convert that to meters, that's going to be 3.20 meters per second. So let's do one last example. Um, so this is the human ear, sensitive from about 15 hertz to 20,000 hertz, and the speed of sound in air is uh, approximately 343 meters per second. So let's see what these wavelengths correspond to. Um, in terms of human hearing. So let's say we have 15 hertz. So we're just going to use the 
wave equation, standard wave equation, V equals F lambda. Whoa, what just happened? V equals F lambda, right? Um, okay, and so we got 343 equals 15 times lambda. Okay, divide by 15, we get a lambda of uh, 22.9. So that's the wavelength. So this would be the lowest frequency or longest wavelength that humans can hear. Um, the highest frequency, you'll go ahead and just do the same thing. So this would be long and then our lambda short. Go ahead and divide by 20,000 this time. And you're going to get point zero one seven one point zero one seven meters so notice the difference here uh, the longest you're at like 23 meters okay that's what about 70 feet or so and then um, this one you're at you know one centimeter two centimeters okay less than an inch all right, second question, how long would it take sound to travel one mile? So for example, let's say you just yell, your friend's a mile away, you yell at them, how long before they actually hear you? So we'll just use our normal V equals distance over time. And this time we're talking about, you know, how the speed of our wave. So if here's you yelling, at your friend who's over here listening to you one mile away okay the sound's going to travel from them to you right and how long will it take for you to hear them well this one will just use the speed of the wave which is 343 the distance one mile which in let's put it in meters it's 1.6 kilometers that's about 16 10 meters and how long is that going to take Okay, divide by 343, you get about 5 seconds. Actually, it's going to be 4.69 seconds. Okay, so it takes about 5 seconds between when they yell until when you hear. You've Perhaps you've heard with uh, thunder and lightning, this is a useful feature. Um, thunder and lightning happen at the exact same time. However, there's a delay between when you see the lightning and hear the thunder. And you can see that delay is because sound travels slower than the speed of light. And so, in fact, if you were to count every approximately five seconds between when you hear the thunder, when you see the lightning and hear the thunder, that five second delay would be mean that the storm or the lightning is about one mile away, right? Okay, all right, so that's our introduction to sound. I'm going to go ahead and stop it here. We'll continue later.